Hello and welcome. Today I just want to spend a few minutes talking about the junctions that we find between cells. These junctions are there for a number of reasons. The first and obvious reason is for structural reasons. In other words, we need to be able to hold cells tightly together so that they don't come apart when stresses are applied to them. The second reason we need junctions between cells is to prevent material going between cells. And where's a good example of that? Well a good example of that is say the blood-brain barrier where we want to keep the blood, its plasma and its constituents separate from that of the fluid that covers the brain and supports the neural tissues. And the third reason we might have particular types of junctions between cells is where we want them to be able to communicate between each other. And the best example of this I can give you is uh, for example in the cells that are embryologically building um, the dentine of teeth, these cells need to act in a coordinated fashion so a, teeth get, so a tooth gets built in an organised way. So these still cells have particular unique junctions between them to allow them to work together. So these are the three fundamental ways in which cells operate together. So let's have a look at those that first type of junction and this is one of the most common found in the body and this is called a desmosome and before we look at the structure of a desmosome let's look at a classic place which we find a desmosome and this is a keratinized epithelium you know for example the skin up here on the surface is this layer that is uh, the keratin, so that's the outer robust layer. But the layer we want to look at is down here. And this area down here is called, colloquially, the prickle cell layer. And if you look really closely, can you notice that these cells have sort of this uh, clear uh, cement line around them? And that is actually a um, factor of the way this tissue was processed to produce this uh, light microscopic section. And what's happened is the cells have shrunk ever so slightly and when they've shrunk the little areas in which they've been tied together with desmosomes have remained tied together. So they look like they have all this little sort of clear cement line around them where in fact what that is is where the two cells are coming up towards each other in various spots they s are still joined together so they are still joined at these spots here by these desmosomes that um, leave you with these open spaces in between here these areas here and here that then look uh, for all intents and purposes relatively clear on the image so if you are looking for the highest density of desmosomes in any tissue, the area to go looking for is in the skin, in the prickle cell layer of the skin. And these desmosomes are there for structural integrity. In other words, when a force is applied to this tissue, be it an angular force like this, when there's a force applied, the desmosomes prevent the cells from tearing apart and hold them to remain as a solid layer. So desmosomes here are structural entities. So let's have a think about what, let's have a look at an electron microscopic level of what a desmosome is. What happens for a desmosome is the two cell membranes come quite close to each other and on in within each cell 
you get the formation of a uh, little plaque of protein and then that plaque of protein is tied into the cytoplasm of each cell by some small toner filaments and then each plaque is tied by filaments between the two cells and this gives the rigidity using filaments it gives the strength of the joint but at the same time it still allows molecules to get past so this sort of joint doesn't seal a layer but it gives it mechanical integrity so let's go on and talk about the second type of joint that we know of and, and that is called a gap junction and what we are looking at here just for those who are interested in the uh, in the image that we're looking at we're actually looking at where a tooth is developing this is called the pulp of the tooth if you've never heard of the inside of a tooth before it's what the public called the nerve of the tooth it's in fact connective tissue it's not a nerve and over on this side here is the dentine and that makes up the core hard tissue of, of a tooth and just so you know this little part here that looks clearer than the rest is where it, it's yet to be calcified so this is called the predentine and uh, as yet it has no calcification but the important thing we want to look at in this section are these set of cells here. These set of cells are called odontoblasts and they line up as columnar cells. They've been a bit uh, messed around on this section just because of um, the arrangement. They line up as columnar cells with large nuclei and you can see the nuclei polar nuclei because these are synthetic cells so the nucleus heads to the far end so the rest of the cytoplasm can be filled by the synthetic organelles rough endoplasmic reticulum and all those sorts of things but more importantly these cells have to work together as a team they have to produce dentine in a regulated fashion so between these cells are another sort of junction and this sort of junction is called a gap junction and gap junctions allow cells to communicate between each other and to show you what a gap junction looks like what we'll do is we'll draw one cell here like this and we'll draw the neighboring cell here like this and a gap junction is a special protein that forms a cylindrical tube between the two cells and that cylindrical tube allows the content, the cytoplasmic content of one cell to move to, one, to the other and vice versa. So it makes a tubular structure that joins the two cells. But just like a desmosome, it doesn't seal between the cells. So uh, interstitial fluid or the liquid up here can make its way down and past a gap junction and go to the other side so this is not a sealing joint but it's a joint that allows communication between the cytoplasm of two cells and it's a protein with a tubular structure that allows that to happen and the last junctional type that I want to talk about, I don't have a picture to show you because it's a much more higher magnification drawing that we need to do. If you remember back, I told you that cell membrane is a bilipid layer. And that bilipid layer has at its two ends a water soluble end and then a fat soluble component and that's what a single layer of cell membrane is so if we drew two cells next to each other what we would have is actually four layers of phospholipid 
we have one layer here on the inside of one cell the second layer is on the outside of that same cell and then we'd have a third layer which is on the outside of the next cell and a fourth layer which is on the inside of this subsequent cell so let's just write the word cytoplasm here and cytoplasm here so we know that this is the inside of the cells on both sides however what happens in a tight junction is this becomes closer and closer together and then at a point we lose these inner two and we end up with a single phospholipid layer and then after that we slowly evolve back to having two on either side I'll just sneak one in down the bottom there I'm running out of screen aren't I so what we've now can see is we've gone from two independent cell membranes let's change color we're getting a bit too much red there we've gone from two independent cell membranes here one there one there and ditto down this side one there and one here we've gone from two cell membranes down to the fusion of the outer surfaces here and what this means is that any liquid that is flowing down between the cells cannot go any further because it's blocked by the fusion of this cell membrane so this is called a tight junction and a tight junction prevents the flow of fluid between cells so this is where we want to seal off one environment from another so they're the three major junctions I have just one more little addition to add when cells need to stick to a solid surface let's imagine this is a solid surface for example let's say that this is um, a tooth a solid tooth and we have some cells on the outside here that need to stick to that surface now all of the junctions we've talked about so far are between two cells but this last junction I want to tell you about is called a hemi hemi desmosome and a hemi desmosome just like its counterpart the desmosome has a protein plate has some filaments now this one is very huge clearly they are really tiny you know in reality proportional this diagram they'll be sort of about this size but I'm just drawing one huge one so you can see the structural elements of it has toner filaments that tie it into the cytoplasm and then has subsequent filaments that tie it down to the hard surface and this is called a hemidesmosome so to summarize we've talked about four different junctions desmosomes and its partner hemidesmosome and the real difference here is this is between cells and this is between a cell and a surface so that is one and two the th another junction we've talked about is gap junctions which is allowing for communication and the fourth junction we've talked about is tight junctions and tight junctions stop fluid between stop fluid from flowing between so these are the four major junctional types that you see between cells thank you